Hello, everybody, and welcome to the SMC Journal Show. I'm Scott Moore, your host. Thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, as you can see, we are making a few changes to our studio, and we are constantly trying to do that. We're kind of bringing Agent 503 back, and we're just trying to see what what's, we should do here. And so bear with us as we make these changes. Uh, today is just a quick video that I wanted to make. Um, basically, I wanted to address... What I'm seeing online in terms of AI advancements in the realm of performance testing, and when I talk about performance, I can talk about observability, I can talk about engineering, but today I specifically want to focus on performance testing. Some of you, like me, may be looking at a lot of social media, LinkedIn specifically, and you see a lot of things out there where it's sort of like... I guess because of generative AI and the ability to create more content more often, there seems to be the ability to create a lot more hype. And it's like everything is out there. Everybody should automatically know about it. Everybody's ad adopted it already. You're already behind. I assure you that is not the case. And I just wanted to bring a little bit of balance to uh, the conversation today. Uh, but what we're going to cover in today's episode is the advancements that I am seeing in performance engineering, and we'll talk about some specific vendor examples that I am, uh, that I know about, and I can't mention everybody, obviously, or this video would be way too long, and just my thoughts as I'm going through this. Just understand, this is just my, uh, this is my opinion from the years that I've been doing performance engineering. And if I'm wrong, hey, call me out. And if you know something different, uh, let me know. That's what this sh show is all about. So uh, let's talk about some of the features that I am seeing going into performance engineering tools. And I guess we should start before we even talk about that is just reminding people if you're not familiar with performance engineering, because some people, this may be the first time that you've seen this show, Performance, engine, uh, performance testing makes sure that your applications can handle real-world load. It also is a validation that the code that you're writing is taking, uh, it's making it as efficient as possible and taking advantage of that. It's not necessarily just about speed, although we do want speed, but it's conservation of resources because we know that resources count on the cloud, which most people are on the cloud in some form or fashion these days. So that really makes a difference. And I am seeing a little bit of a, I don't know, not a pushback, but uh, less and less emphasis on this, even though it's needed more than ever today. Well, we maybe we don't need to worry about that because AI is going to take care of it. And I think, um, well, we'll get into my thoughts about that as we go. But I think um, we're starting to see a little bit of the AI bubble bust around that particular piece. So let's talk about a few of the features that we are actually seeing out there in the market today. One of which is predictive analytics and load simulation. So what do I mean by that? That means that you are using historical data and historical user patterns to simulate realistic traffic. And there's a lot of numbers out there on this where some companies are saying, hey, we're getting a 40% gain because we can now simulate uh, realistic load uh, much faster. We've actually, I've done some uh, videos and some blog articles on speed scale where speed scale actually captures the historical traffic and replays it back. So it's the actual traffic that you're actually using uh, and you're able to create a load based on that and, and make it uh, simulated very quickly and, and safely, by the way, by replacing uh, real data with mocked data. So that is something that I think we will see more of. And it's something that AI is very good at, um, having a way to predict things by matching patterns faster and faster. Um, always the caveat there is, how do we know that it's doing it the right way? Um, the ability to, to know that requires some level of context and some level of expertise as well, um, and not just throwing it out there to do that. So it uh, kind of goes without saying, but that's the, the way that it is. Let's talk about the second thing, generative AI for test scripts. <laughs> now, generative AI is the, I guess, the oldest of the AIs that we we always refer to 
which is taking and generating something uh, from, say, natural language processing. And I'll show you an example of that in just a little bit. But it basically means that we're using natural language processing to ask the testing tool to do something. We're seeing this also in functional automation as well. So load testing, uh, coming up with those business processes that need to be part of a, a load test, whether that's in our early feature release and early in the pipeline, or if it's um, an integrated test at the you know, towards after that, where you're kind of validating everything. Um, the other, again, it is about whether or not those test scripts that are being created, are they the right test scripts? Um, we talked about it's simulating load, real life load, but what if you're having to create certain edge cases or certain business processes um, that are not just in um, a, one typical area, but you've got to cover multiple areas? Um, that can require, again, some context and somebody who knows what they're doing to validate that the AI is giving you what it's supposed to be giving you. Next thing, and this is more of a newer piece, which is agentic AI and autonomous testing. Now, this is the one where I'm a little bit still a little sketchy because it's basically saying that we finally have uh, agentic AI taking everything to the next level where you can have a smart agent basically handling everything tip to tail. And it, it comes up with everything for you. Um, that's the part where I think maybe there's a little bit more hype to that than in other places. Will we get there? I mean, I'm sure that eventually we will, but, um, there's, there's a, you gotta, you gotta think when you read some of this stuff, there is a lot of money riding on this for vendors to be able to sell something that has AI features in it and consumers want that. Um, whether it can actually do what it says it's going to do, will it make it faster? Most likely, will it make it better? That is the question. And can it do it autonomously? Um, I've heard of this um, just in kind of the wild. Haven't really seen it. If you have seen it or experienced it, maybe comment below. Let me know what you're actually seeing out there. So the next thing I want to do is pop into some actual examples of vendors who are making strides in the way of AI in performance testing. And one of those is Tricentis. Tricentis Neoload introduced in July their MCP server. I think everybody in the world has introduced an MCP server at this point. But the MCP server for Neoload right now is AI-powered performance testing and what it's supposed to be able to do. You can think of it like... Uh, again, natural language processing and asking it to do things like, uh, I want you to create a script that does this. I want you to create a test uh, with this ratio of scripts, um, the percentage of doing this, percentage of doing that. I want you to um, give me back analysis and I want these graphs and these formats. Um, this is something that I have seen in a demo of and it, it has been pretty impressive. Keep in mind, this as of right now, as of this date that I'm recording this, is still in limited release. And so one of the reasons for that is because they want to make sure, the vendor obviously would want to make sure that people that are using it are getting the kind of results that they should be getting and that it is providing accurate information and it is getting it is going to the tools that it's supposed to be going to and is providing what it's supposed to be providing and that's going to be for all vendors who release anything like this in the future so keep that in mind another vendor that has begun to release ai features around their product is blaze meter from perforce um, they've introduced their ai script assistant which basically allows you to use natural language to input and automate script creation. And you can ask it to get a blaze meter variable, create a global variable, check for successful execution of some type of a post. So you can ask it these questions to do this and print it out. And it, it is supposed to do that. I have personally not seen this feature, but it's something that I'm hearing more and more 
about from Blaze Meter, and you'll probably be seeing a lot more announcements from them in the future as well. So that's another example that I'm seeing, uh, again, using that, that generative AI natural language processing built into the product. Now, uh, one vendor that has not stayed behind in this is OpenText. Uh, their product, which used to be called LoadRunner, now is called Performance Engineering. They have a product called, um, or I guess a feature called Aviator. And this Aviator within Performance Engineering added uh, several features around AI, which included a an LLM protocol. So if you're testing an LLM and they also added ViewGen Intelligence, uh, analysis in a natural language chat, and token process monitoring. So uh, these are things that are new. Uh, you would have to have a license, obviously, to do this with open text, being that it's a commercial product. Um, again, these are new, I, and I'm, I'm not going to go into all of the details of it and, and how to use it and everything. These are just things that we're seeing in this market in this realm that there are things being added to tools um, daily um, and we don't know right now the maturity of all of these pieces because usually what happens is there'll be a a handful of early adopters and uh, they will begin to go through a lot of the things that that they're finding they don't like about it and then there will be updates to to the product and it will get better over time but those are the things that I actually saw. Uh, you'll also see some people that are working around open source and JMeter and different different other tools. Um, again, can't go into all of them, but they're they're using uh, one or more of these three pieces that I mentioned here on the show. I would like to. I'd also like to just add just my thoughts around this is that you know. If you're looking at LinkedIn and you're seeing that it just feels like you're behind, I, I just feel like there is just a lot more ability to hype stuff out there and that there is this notion that everybody just automatically adopts everything and knows everything, and that is definitely not the case. Whether you believe this or not, the people that are trying to adopt and and move forward and do I mean they want to do that but the pace at which they can do it may not be as fast as what they're being painted by the social media so don't let that necessarily fool you and throw you uh, I'm definitely a person who when I see something that works I'm just as excited as everybody else and I want to hype it up as well but on the other hand I'm also realistic and I understand I've actually been fooled a few times and I know that there can be some smoke and mirror symptoms. I'm not saying that about any of these products whatsoever, but um, we want to see where this kind of lays out in the long run. I'd like to know your thoughts on it. I'm pretty easy to reach on social media. So if you did want to contact me, you can just reach out to me on most of the social media platforms, including LinkedIn, if you'd like. You could also send me an email to heyscott at smcjournal.com. Uh, it would be great if you subscribe to this channel and let me know if you like this kind of content. And if you do, I will be making more of it. What do you think about uh, AI and the capabilities of AI in performance engineering testing tools today? We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'll see you on the next SMC Journal. Bye-bye.